Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to another video here on the channel and as I'm filming this, the new Inibuilds A320 Neo aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator's release is just around the corner. Now for those of you who run Microsoft Flight Simulator on your PC, well we have been rather lucky in the fact that we've had the Airbus A32NX from the Fly-by-Wire team uh, for a long time now and that has been the go-to A320neo aircraft uh, since that was released not too long after Microsoft Flight Simulator first arrived. And one thing many sim pilots wanted or in fact actually needed uh, in order to fly this aircraft as realistically as possible was a realistic A320neo takeoff performance calculator to give you accurate V speeds and flex temp calculations. Now of course the A320neo is still a relatively new aircraft from Airbus so the engine performance data which amongst other things is used to help calculate all these V speeds and flex temp parameters etc then they of course are not really released into the general public and quite rightly too because of course they've developed the aircraft and so too have developed the performance software which they then obviously license to the airlines that purchase their aircraft. So creating a realistic A320neo performance calculator for Microsoft Flight Simulator for example is just not possible because you can't get 100% accuracy without all the proper data from Airbus which of course they're not just going to provide. However, many of you familiar with the channel will know that I have been involved for some time now uh, with the development of a A320neo performance calculator called SimSmart and this is based upon the real Airbus performance calculator which is called FlySmart. But just how realistic is it? I've already said it's impossible to get a 100% accurate performance calculator because we don't have the data from Airbus. So is SimSmart any good? Is it close? to fly smart the real calculator in this video that is exactly what we're going to look at we're going to have a look at some certain scenarios and we are going to test the figures and expose any vulnerabilities that SimSmart has we're doing this of course because the a320 neo from intervals is about to release for Microsoft flight simulator which means that for the first time those of you who run Microsoft flight simulator on Xbox will have a good realistic a320 neo aircraft to fly that isn't just the standard the default aircraft. There's also some really exciting news and that is SimSmart is actually now on its way to coming to a web browser version. Currently it is an application within Windows but the web browser version is well underway and I'm going to show you that a little bit later on in this video which means that you will be able to just use SimSmart on a smartphone or a tablet or if you still prefer a web browser on your PC. But let's have a look at just how how realistic SimSmart actually is. So this is SimSmart and what it looks like, the desktop application. Most of you are probably already familiar with this if you watch the channel. And this is FlySmart. You can see they're laid out in exactly the same way, so look very similar. But that's not the important bit. The important bit is how close FlySmart's calculations matches to SimSmart, or vice versa. So off the bat then, let's just test out a real calculation, starting with a departure out of Belfast Airport. Uh, here's my operational flight plan. Let's get our takeoff weight, which we can see there. Let's put all of this stuff into both FlySmart and SimSmart, departing off runway 7, and see how the two compare. So let's put the airport code in, obviously the correct runway, all the data is fetched automatically as it is in the real world FlySmart. What we can do in SimSmart is press the get meta button which automatically downloads that. Funnily enough, the real world FlySmart doesn't do this, you have to enter that manually, which is fair enough. We've just made this a little bit easier in SimSmart by using an automated feature. You can, however, enter it manually if you wish. That is also an option. So we'll set this as a flex takeoff config one, which is what we'd normally do. Hit the calculate button and that's what we've got. All right, so there are the V speeds and the flex temp of 68. Let's see how FlySmart compares. Okay, so that's pretty close. FlySmart on the left, SimSmart on the right, and as you can see comparing the figures, the flex temp is 
perfectly matched and SimSmart has three knots out on each of the V speeds, which again for the sim world is pretty close. Uh, green dot is one knot out. The maximum takeoff weight is a little bit more conservative in SimSmart, better than the alternate. The thrust reduction and acceleration values, well these can change depending on the airline. So don't worry too much if those are slightly out. That all depends on what you've got set up in uh, your options, whether you want those to be 800 feet, 1,000 feet, or even some airlines, 1,500 feet uh, AGL. And the engine out procedure is uh, matched perfectly. Now, one thing you might also notice is that there is no trim value setting in either FireSmart or SimSmart, so you're not getting an up or down figure. And that's because a lot of airlines now tend to use the center of gravity uh, rather than the figures from a calculator. The center of gravity, you'll have seen if you watch our live streams, actually comes from your load sheet. And you can get that in the A32NX and, of course, the Phoenix aircraft as well. Okay, let's quickly try another example and let's change some of the parameters. Let's enter config2. So we'll take off with flaps2 and we should see these speeds obviously change accordingly as we hit calculate. Let's see how FlySmart represents this. Okay, so once again, that's actually matched quite close. The V speeds are a couple of knots out. Flex is spot on. And also the maximum takeoff weight also appears much closer represented this time as well. All right, so let's complicate things then. Let's make the runway at Belfast wet and see what that does. Obviously, what we'll do is so we'll put that back to uh, flaps one and we should see a lower V1 because we need more runway in front of us to stop. So that V1 rejected takeoff speed should be lower. Here are the figures, of course, in SimSmart and FlySmart gives us figures which, again, are pretty close but not quite as accurate as the dry figures but they're not a million miles out v1 for example is only one knot out the flex temp is only one degree out the biggest variation there you can see is obviously v2 and vr but again for a home flight simulator it's more than acceptable okay so let's change airports let's see what london heathrow has to offer now of course london heathrow has much longer runways than belfast so we can expect higher v speeds which should actually be quite close together because with the long runway, we have got more runway in front of us to be able to stop and reject the takeoff at high speed, and we should also have higher flex temps. So here's the SimSmart calculation using the live meta for the day, and as you can see and predicted, the V speeds are much higher and also quite close together. V1 and V are the same, which is realistic. Let's see how FlySmart interprets this data. So once again, pretty close. The V speeds are all within two knots and the flex was just three degrees out, which again is pretty close. So let's start complicating things and try and skew the figures a little bit. Uh, let's turn the anti-ice on. Looks like a low cloud kind of day there in the background. Uh, not every airline turns the packs off for departure. So let's see how that affects the figures. Obviously changed ever slightly there in uh, SimSmart. Let's see what FlySmart does with those. And you'll notice the only thing that has actually changed is the flex temp. The V-speeds remain exactly the same because we haven't changed the weight of the aircraft or changed the length of the runway, anything like that. But because we're now tapping a bit more performance from the engines for the anti-ice and the packs, then we need a bit more thrust. So the flex has dropped down a little bit and it's, as you can see, within uh, two degrees when we compare them both. Okay, so let's have a look at Jersey. Very short runway, so it's more important that we've got things like accurate V-speeds, so we know that we've got enough distance in front, and we'll check out some performance uh, calculations here. Again, I'm going to use the real meta that's been reported at the time I'm filming this video. Um, yeah, okay, that looks fine. Let's hit calculate, see what we've got, and of course, let's compare that with FlySmart. 
So there we can see a big difference in flex with SimSmart being more conservative. So I suppose it's better to be that way than uh, than the other. Basically telling you it needs more engine thrust than uh, than the real world calculator. However, the V speeds are again aren't too far out. In fact, VR is absolutely spot on, as is uh, Green Dot as well. Okay, let's make the runway wet. It is Jersey after all. So let's pop in wet figures and compare those and see what happens. And as you can see, V1 is spot on. VR only one knot out. V2 is three knots out. And the flex still a little bit out, but with SimSmart being conservative. So let's check out a full config departure. So we're talking flaps three and also toga, which happens if you're heavy on short runways. So these are SimSmart's results. Let's see what FlySmart does. Obviously thrust is just toga and all of these speeds within three knots yet again. So hopefully so far you've seen that the figures SimSmart provides are pretty close to the real world calculator. But that's not to say that SimSmart is infallible. It's still obviously not a fully working, fully accurate calculator because there simply one doesn't exist other than of course the real world one. And SimSmart was created with data from European airports of which most of them are pretty close to sea level, even below in the case of Amsterdam. So when it comes to airports around the rest of the world where their elevation is much higher, 4,000 feet and above, then SimSmart can start to get skewed results compared to the real world FlySmart. But unfortunately, SimSmart doesn't have worldwide data. Now, of course, that doesn't mean to say that you cannot use SimSmart around the rest of the globe. It just means that you're not going to get things like the engine out procedures and such like that. And when you get to airports where the elevation becomes higher than, say, three, four thousand feet, then the figures you just need to bear in mind aren't going to be as real as they possibly could be. But they're still going to be more than close enough for Microsoft Flight Simulator and any other simulator which has the A320 Neo in it. Here we are at Basel, which is about a thousand feet above sea level. So let's just have a look at a quick calculation there. So we're obviously higher from the standard ISA conditions. And let's have a look how SimSmart compares. And there, hopefully you can see that about a thousand feet above sea level, you are still getting very accurate figures. The V speeds out by a knot or two, the flex only out by one yet again. So it's going to still give you decent figures when you're a thousand feet above sea level. Okay, so now I'm going to just play with the wind. I've added 10 knots headwind to our departure. You can see the V speeds have changed. Let's see what FlySmart gives us. And that actually looks even closer than the last calculation. OK, let's have a look at a tailwind then. Obviously, a 15 knot tailwind is a takeoff limitation. So these are the figures with the tailwind and FlySmart gives us figures which are a little bit further out now than they were with the headwind. You can see SimSmart being rather conservative with V1. The other V speeds, however, not too far out, but flex, of course, as you can see, four degrees out. So hopefully that has shown you the comparison between the real world calculator FlySmart and the one that I use and have also helped develop for the flight simulator world. Now, of course, full disclosure, as I say, I have helped develop this. So I suppose there is a vested interest in there. But that's not to say that SimSmart is unfallible. In fact, in creating this video, we actually uncovered some things which showed that some of the data and some of the results we get particularly when there is a direct crosswind uh, takeoff, so a 90 degree takeoff angle uh, to the runway compared to the wind, um, that really does give you skewed figures in SimSmart. Whilst they will be perfectly fine and safe for a, uh, for a departure in your home flight simulator, compare them to the real world calculator, then yes, they are quite a way off. So that's something we're now going to have to go in, look at and fix. 
We've also noticed that the heavier you are, the worse the results are. And when I say worse, I mean things like the flex being out by instead of two or three or even four, then the flex can be out sometimes by as much as seven or eight. But we're talking close to your maximum takeoff weight, which doesn't happen too often, thankfully. But again, it's something to make a note of and something that we can now go and look into uh, rectifying. Now, of course, due to the amount of work that has gone into it, SimSmart is a commercial product. It costs less than five pounds and it's only a one-time purchase, so there are no ongoing fees. Whether you think that is worth it or not, given the demonstrations that I've shown in this video, well, that's for you to decide. But I would love to hear what your comments are on the comparisons that you've seen in this video. So please do leave a comment down below on what you think to the software and how you think potentially it could be improved or whether you're happy with uh, with what you've seen. Now, at the moment, the program runs as an application on Windows PC. However, exciting news that I mentioned at the start of the video, that the web browser version is well underway in its development. As you can see on screen here, this is basically my tablet just being uh, cast onto screen. So you're going to be able to use SimSmart either on a tablet, on your phone, or just on your PC as a browser. Obviously, that makes it much more accessible and with the inbuilt A320 Neo aircraft coming out in the future soon, then it means that those of you who use Microsoft Flight Simulator on Xbox will also be able to take advantage of this software as well to add to your flying and make things a little bit more realistic. For those of you who have already purchased SimSmart and use it on Windows, this upgrade for the web browser will simply be free. You'll be provided with a login for that when it is released so obviously no extra costs incurred there thank you then so much for watching i do hope that you have enjoyed this video and s enjoyed the comparison between both SimSmart and its real-world counterpart. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future video content and, of course, our live streamed flights. Thanks again. I'll see you all again in the next video. Bye-bye for now.